here on the Albert Dock on this beautiful day and this year marks the 25th anniversary of the Tate in Liverpool so I'm heading over there to see the opening of Chagall Modern Master as well as Moira Davies Hangmen of England so the two exhibitions are going to be running throughout the whole summer and the really special exhibition so I'm really excited to go and check them out. artistic career so when he's in his mid-twenties he's a really young guy and we're looking at the three years he spends in Paris from 1911 to 1914 and he comes into contact with all these major avant-garde figures um, learns about cubism learns about basically the beginnings of abstraction and then he returns to Russia just before the outbreak of the first world war and that means he's forced to stay in Russia for eight years. He can't get back to Europe um, because then there's the Russian Revolution. So it's a period of huge political and social change in Russia. And we try to track the effect everything um, in that wider context has on his painting. And we finish the kind of climax of the show is a big installation of the murals he did for a small theatre in Moscow, um, a Jewish chamber theatre, and that's a really immersive installation. It's kind of installation art before there was installation art. It's a prototype for this surround sound feeling of being in the painting. It's like, it's huge, isn't it? Like, um, it's eight metres, so it's yeah. really big. It's nicknamed Chagall's Box. Yeah, 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 because it was constructed in this rectangular domestic apartment and he covered the ceiling, all the walls, everything. And unfortunately, the ceiling was lost, as was the theatre curtain, but we have the surviving seven murals. So we, we look at those in great depth and then we have a room at the end of the exhibition which looks towards his later work because obviously finishing in 1920 he had another 65 years um, of practice and he was painting right up until the day he died in 1985 so we kind of hint towards the the huge career that he had after this period. Did have a very long career like for, you know, especially for an artist, where do you start? But this exhibition, it definitely covers a lot of that. Well, I think for Chagall, unlike a lot of other painters in that period, he was interested in what painting could express um, as emotion. So he wasn't very analytical and he didn't go down the route of cubism being very precise and about the theory of painting he was interested in actually doing painting and using it as a way to tell a story so a lot of them they're a real narrative behind the paintings we've got promenade behind us which is the artist um, holding his wife who they married two years earlier and she's floating off into the sky and for him, I think painting is a fantasy world that you can express things that wouldn't be possible in the natural world. So I think people will hopefully really connect with this idea of storytelling that's at the heart of a lot of the paintings. So I'm here with Moira Daly. Um, Moira, you have got your exhibition running here at the Tate Liverpool um, for the whole summer. So it's, yeah, right through to October. Um, so tell us about, talk us through your exhibition, um, what people can expect when they, when they come, and, come and see it. Okay, well, it's, um, there's, there's three new works, actually more than, there's four new works. Uh, one of them, the Copperheads, um, the big piece behind me is, um, it's actually a new iteration of a work that I did over 20 years ago. Really? I did 100 Copperheads in around 1990, and then... Uh, for this show, I photographed a hundred more pennies that I'd been collecting over the years and um, and decided to, the main difference is that they're larger and they're folded up and mailed directly to to the Tate. So the one cent coins, aren't they, um, that you've photographed, that's what it is, and all the, the ju they're just, they look com all completely different. They're, I, I collect only the dirtiest and most scratched up yes. ones, and they're not that hard to find, <laughs> actually. And um, and when you photograph them in close up, they're utterly transformed. Everyone just goes, oh, it's, it's one yeah. cent, like a penny. What it's like the same in England, it's like a penny or whatever, throw it away. Throw it away. Yeah. But the the re the really beautiful when you like close up, yeah. and you look at them, and they don't look like much, but 
but then if you see how they yeah. uh, get changed yeah. uh, in the in the process of photographing, I mean, there's a raking light, so that yeah. really accentuates all the grooves the and the, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, so tell us about obviously you mail them to the yeah. It's um, it's a kind of delivery system that I came up with. It's um, it was kind of an accident the way I I, um, I started uh, doing this folding and mailing. It wasn't mm-hmm. something that I planned. It was um, yeah. it was quite inadvert- inadvertent uh, but I realized that I, I loved handling the photograph just like as something very casual like a piece of yeah. paper and and folding it up and kind of turning it into a letter and writing on it and mm-hmm. taping it and and um, and just like popping it in the mail and and not having to think about all the complications of yeah. shipping crating because and shipping I, like I don't know I'd be worried I'd be like if it doesn't get there on time. <laughs> you do worry a little bit, but um, I've never had one go astray. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's good. Cool, it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it is.